litany of the beloved community. We all bear the imprint of you, our creator. The colors of our skin are your design, and what we have of beauty in our race as human beings, you define. You stretched a living fabric on our frame and gave each one their own language and a name. We need not look up to find our creator. We need only look around, within ourselves, beyond ourselves, into the eyes of another. Sadly, we are pulled apart and divided by hate because our race or skin is not the same. We are judged unequal by the state and made victims because of our name, ostracized because of who we love. Our humanity is reduced to little worth. We dishonor your name and face on earth. Help us to change. We need not look up to find our creator. We need only look around, within ourselves, beyond ourselves, into the eyes of another. Loving Your Enemies, sermon by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., delivered at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama, on the 17th of November, 1957. So somehow the isness of our present nature is out of harmony with the eternal oughtness that forever confronts us. And this simply means this, that within the best of us, there is some evil, and within the worst of us, there is some good. When we come to see this, we take a different attitude toward individuals. The person who hates you most has some good in him. Even the nation that hates you most has some good in it. Even the race that hates you most has some good in it. And when you come to the point that you look in the face of every man and see deep down within him what religion calls the image of God, you begin to love him in spite of. No matter what he does, you see God's image there. There is an element of goodness that he can never slough off. Discover the element of good in your enemy, and as you seek to hate him, find the center of goodness and place your attention there, and you will take a new attitude. Oh, they may react in many ways in the beginning. They react with bitterness because they are mad, because you love them like that. They react with guilt feelings, and sometimes they'll hate you a little more at this transition period, but just keep loving them. And by the power of your love, they will break down under the load. That's love, you see. It is redemptive, and this is why Jesus says love. There is something about love that builds up and is creative. There is something about hate that tears down and is destructive. So love your enemies. Now there is a final reason I think that Jesus says love your enemies. It is this, that love has within it a redemptive power, and there is a power there that eventually transforms individuals. That's why Jesus says love your enemies, because if you hate your enemies, you have no way to redeem and to transform your enemies. But if you love your enemies, you will discover that at the very root of love is the power of redemption. You just keep loving people and keep loving them, even though they're mistreating you. Here's the person who was a neighbor, and this person is doing something wrong to you and all of that. Just keep being friendly to that person. Keep loving them. Don't do anything to embarrass them. Just keep loving them, and they can't stand it too long. Beyond Vietnam, A Time to Break Silence, sermon by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., April 4th, 1967. When I speak of love, I am not speaking of some sentimental and weak response. I am speaking of that force which all of the great religions have seen as the supreme unifying principle of life. Love is somehow the key that unlocks the door, which leads to ultimate reality. This Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, Buddhist belief about ultimate reality is beautifully summed up in the first epistle of St. John. Let us love one another, for love is God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. from Birmingham Jail, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., April 16, 1963. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of neutrality tied in a single garment of suffering. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Never again can we afford to live with a narrow provincial or separate educator idea. Anyone who lives inside the United States can never be considered, a, considered an outsider any, anywhere within its bounds. Now is the time to make the real promise of democracy and transform our pending national elegy into a great epistemal brotherhood. Now is the time to lift our national policy from the quicksand of racial injustice to 
for the Solid Rocket Treatment Technique. The Drum Major Instinct, sermon by Rev. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., February 4th, 1968. And so Jesus gave us a new norm of greatness. If you want to be important, wonderful. If you want to be recognized, wonderful. If you want to be great, wonderful. But recognize that he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. That's a new definition of greatness, the thing that I like about it. By giving that definition of greatness, it means that everybody can be great. Everybody, because everybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree to serve. You don't have to know about Plato and Aristotle to serve. You don't have to know Einstein's theory of relativity to serve. You don't have to know the second theory of thermodynamics in physics to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love, and you can be that servant. I Have a Dream speech by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, August 28, 1963. I say to you today, my friends, so even though we face difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the Red Hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even in the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today.